Wake up, wake up, wake up, my people. Wake up. Man, I ran across this video um, where we got this Karen um, harassing some young brothers. And, you know, it, it's just sad that um, this is what our brothers, um, young brothers are having to go through and how dangerous it is for her to be um, pulling something like this off. So I'm going to try to play this video, then I'm going to come back and, and tie the scriptures in with it. So let's get this video played. Hello and welcome back to the channel. So before I get into this, I want to share a video clip with you guys. Okay, I'm going to share this video clip with you because this is out of control. Karens around the world need to be stopped because they are doing dangerous things. They are doing things that could end a person's life. Anyway, take a look at this video clip and I will be right back. Okay, we all saw how Karen turned it on and off like a faucet. She turned the tears on, started crying, screaming for help. And you saw the white men in the background trying to come to her rescue, not knowing anything about the situation. They automatically believed her and she was a cotton picking liar. She was a liar. She was lying. But she turned on those tears and put on that damsel in distress act and boom. There they were to her rescue, even though they hadn't confirmed a thing. They're trying to intervene and mediate something without any facts or details whatsoever. And she's screaming, help, help, help. Hmm. This is what we're talking about. These type of people, the, this type of woman right here, have gotten so many black men deleted off the earth. With this type of act right here, the damsel in distress act. Now, for those of you who want to litter my comment section talking about criminality of black people, talk about the criminality of all people. Okay? It's amazing to me how when you say that black, when we say that black lives matter, then they want to say all lives matter. But when we talk about crime, everyone wants to talk about black crime. Let's talk about all crime because there are criminals in every racial group. This situation is a white woman being a criminal. She is lying. She is creating um, an atmosphere of, or inciting violence against these black men. Y'all might say I'm reaching, but y'all know that when, when they weaponize those tears that people, people can die. Y'all know that. So they are inciting violence. 
Yes, they are. This is also a disturbance of the peace because she's acting, she's lying. This is not real. Someone pointed out that when you rent these e-bikes, you are responsible for it. And anything that happens to those e-bikes under your rental, you're responsible for. So who is she to, to think she can come and take over something that he had already paid for? So she weaponized her tears, as many of them have done. As a result, many have died because Karens all around the world, especially here in the U.S., have weaponized their tears to get the reaction that they want from their people with that damsel in distress act. So anyway, there is an update to this story, and I'm going to share the update with you all as well. Here's the update. Um, apparently, um, that Karen has lost her job. So NYC Hospital Karen on leave after allegedly trying to take black man's bike and viral video. So on leave doesn't necessarily mean that she was, you know, um, fired, but it says the Bellevue Hospital employee branded a Karen after she was caught on video allegedly attempting to hijack a city bike that had already been paid for by a black man has been placed on leave. Um, NYC Health plus hospitals confirmed to the post. Um, a clip of the explosive encounter has raked in more than 40 million views on social media after it was shared on Twitter on Saturday with the healthcare worker or network labeling it disturbing. It says we are aware of the video involving a healthcare provider off duty and all and away from the hospital campus <laughs> they wanted to throw that in there, right? They said off duty and away from the hospital campus. They want to make sure just in case any lawsuits that they're clearing their own selves. I don't blame them, you know. They're like, look, what Karen do on her off time, we don't want it attached to us. I mean, that's that's absolutely normal. And it's a natural response to this. It's like, hey, Karen, that's your mess and we don't want no parts of it. It says the incident in the video is disturbing a spokesperson for NYC Health and Hospital said in the statement Tuesday, uh, the provider is currently out on leave and will remain on leave pending a review, uh, the statement continued. As a healthcare system, we are committed to providing an environment for our patients and staff that is free from discrimination of any kind. So she's only on leave, not necessarily fired yet because they are, everything is under review. And with all the negativity, I wouldn't be a bit surprised um, if they don't allow her back, but don't be a bit surprised if she ends up working for some major network because they feel sorry for her after raising millions of dollars for her. Don't be, don't be surprised if she walks out of this a rich woman. Okay. Um, it, it talks about the video. It started with a mid confrontation. Uh, it starts mid confrontation shows a woman dressed in hospital branded scrubs screaming for help as she tugs at the bike. Help, help. Help me, help me, please, she let, she yells. Okay, the young man calmly keeps his grip on the bike's handlebars and repeatedly tells the woman who is white that he already paid to use the particular bike. So there she is weaponizing her tears. There's a white man in the background. If you saw the video, uh, he was coming to her aid, trying to put the black man in check or the young black man in check because Karen's crying. Uh, when, when a Karen cries, we have to come to the rescue because she's a damsel in distress right now and she needs our help, even though we haven't confirmed anything of truth that she has said. It says, get off me, get off me. You're hurting my fetus. <laughs> what? The woman then exclaims while pushing and shoving the man. Oh, my goodness. So she said, you're hurting my fetus. Did she really? Oh, my goodness. She said, you're hurting my fetus. So she's claiming to be pregnant and and saying that he's hurting her feet is it oh my goodness man so she's trying to get him killed he says i'm not touching you you're putting your stomach on my hand the man retorts as she continues to cry out for help uh, the biker makes no attempts at shoving the woman back but holds his ground as he and his group of friends tell her to back off and get her own bike so she's lying up a storm. She's trying to get these men killed and talking about you're hurting my fetus. That's a lying devilish move right there. Mm, mm, mm. About halfway through the nearly two minute clip, 
uh, the woman appears to start crying theatrically theatrically as a white man wearing the same NYC hospital scrub approaches the group to ask what is going on. As the apparent co-worker of the woman tries to step in, the young man on the bike makes a final appeal to the woman. This is my bike. It's on my account. Please move, he says. The cyclist friends who are filming the confrontation then tell the woman to stop fake crying as the other hospital worker tells the woman to take another bike. Look at her. One of the co-workers makes the suggestion that the woman is suddenly calm and begins setting, setting up a nearby bike for use. Mm, mm, mm. The bewildering encounter exploded online with critics calling the unknown pr provider a Karen and castivating her for weaponizing her white woman tears. A DCPI spokesperson told the Post that the NYPD is aware of the video circulating online, but nothing was reported. There are currently no 911 calls or reports on file for this incident, the spokesperson said. The NYPD encourages anyone who believes they were a victim of a crime to come forward and report it at any police facility so that an investigation can commit. Whatever. Look at her. Lying, lying, lying. Talking about you're hurting my fetus. Ain't that something? Mm, mm, mm. Wow. But I don't think anybody is surprised. That is exactly the kind of thing that we have to deal with in this country. She said he was hurting her fetus. Yeah, I'm stuck on that one, y'all, because she's trying to get this man in trouble. Anyway, this is this is it, y'all. This was the Karen Tears that could have ended careers. I'm out, y'all. Chop it up in the comment section, as always. Say, keep it tight and keep it right. But until next time, I'm out. We hope you liked today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe. Man, man. So you see that. You see what happened. You see how Karen just showed up and showed out. You know, I mean, we got fake tears. Um, we calling for help. Um, you pushing on my, f uh, uh, man. You hurting my baby. Help me. And right away, you know, the brothers expect to just reset and, and let her have it. Nah, this ain't kindergarten or head start. Where you get whatever blocks you want and you can cry your way to having them but this is dangerous man what what she was trying to pull was extremely dangerous so you know we're gonna read a few scriptures and just tie it into what's going on around here let me see if i can get some music going in the background for me but this is like just sad and the things like like um we always have to wonder can we survive a traffic stop can we can we survive now nah, it's just like can we survive just being out can, can we survive just being out? It's outdoor seat. Can we survive just being out? Let's get it. Romans 3 and 4. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou as mightest be justified in thou saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. <laughs> so, you know, we're just going to bring the scriptures out. 
and show you how this Karen. And I mean, right here, this Matthew's 14 really described the people that Karen descends from. This is the people that Karen descends from. So it shouldn't be surprising the behavior that we receive from. It shouldn't even be surprising. But let's get it. Matthew's 14 and 6. But Herod, when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herod danced before them and pleased Herod. Matthew's 14 and 7. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. Matthew 14 and 8. And she began before instructions of her mother. Uh, let me say that over. Matthew's 14 and 8. And she being before instructed of her mother saying, give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. Asking for the prophet's head on a charger. Knowing that this prophet didn't do anything to them but tell Herod that he was wrong for for engaging in a relationship with her. So that's why she wanted his head. Matthews 14 and 9. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oak's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given to her. Matthews 14 and 10. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. Just went and beheaded the prophet for no reason. They understood no one could hold them accountable for taking John's life. They understood that. Let's get Zechariah 11 and 4. We'll be reading 4 and 5. Thus said the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And, and their own shepherds pity them not. Yeah. Yeah, our people, if it ain't going to benefit the, the ones that is put in, in a powerful place here, if they don't see where they going to get some capital gain or, or some, some um, notoriety some kind of way, they're not even going to get involved. They're not even going to speak up on this. You know, we'll get Obama, he, if he claimed to be black, he speak up on everything else, but he ain't speaking up on things like this. He ain't speaking against people that, that's mistreating the, the descendants of the slave trade. They don't pity us. So now we have to see, are the people who possess us our friends or our enemies? We just need to know, are they our friends or our enemies? We're going to go to Deuteronomy um, 28, and we're going to be reading 68, 64 through 68. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth unto the other. And there shall serve, and thou shalt serve <laughs> other gods which neither thou fathers have known, even wood and stone, knew what we was going to be into. Deuteronomy 28 and 65. And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy feet have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and a felling of eyes and sorrow of mind. That, that our kids is sorrowful, that our kids can't be out just enjoying each other's company without um, someone of the other nation 
especially the Caucasian race, coming in and just trying to interrupt these guys' good time. I mean, what? And people love to say that they are afraid of us. They have never been afraid of us. Never. Deuteronomy 28, 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt before, <laughs> before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and thou shalt have no assurance of thee life. We ain't have no assurance that that young brother was going to survive that situation. That thing could have went totally bad. We remember Rosewood. I mean, we, we don't know what's going to pop off in their head. Deuteronomy um, 28 and 67. In the morning thou shalt say, with, with God it was evening, and in the evening thou shalt say, with God it was morning. For the fear of the heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of the eyes which thou shalt see. Yes, it's fearful day and night, because that was in the daytime and the brothers were threatened. You be out at night and they can say rape or whatever. And now we're threatened again. I don't, man, I wish most high would just come and get us and we don't have to be around nonsense like this. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way thereof, I spoke unto thee. And thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no man was going to redeem us out of this captivity. We won't get out of this captivity until the Most High sent his son back to redeem us. <clears throat> so I guess time done went on. You know, I guess we feel we don't have enemies no more. But he said we will be sold unto our enemies. So maybe your enemies can become your friends. And you can trust them. Let's see how the most high feel about our enemy. We got to know, according to the Bible, how to deal with our worldly affairs, our daily affairs, uh, how to deal with anybody that we have to deal with. But let's see how, how the Most High feel about our enemies. Ecclesiastica 12, and we'll be reading 10 through 12. Never trust thy enemy, for like iron rusts, so is his wickedness. Yeah, see how wicked they are? Now, this is the offspring of these people that say we should be able to live among them with no problem. And she just tried to debo this man's um, e-bike. What type of nonsense is that? Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heave and beware of him. And she work in a hospital. So you got to also trust her in a hospital setting, man, the first thing I'm thinking, like, man, this, this lady here come and give you the wrong drug or something, man. Beware of him. Let me start off. Throw he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Yep, can't wipe it away because how he was created. He was created to be our enemy. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thee place. Neither let him set at the right hand, lest he seek to take thee seat. And thou, at the least, remember my words and be plucked therewith. 
Come on, man. We got to come back to the most high's words and understand that these people are not for us. They can't be for us because they were created to be our enemy. One thing about this current condition that we are in, it will change because of the promises that was made by the Most High, telling his chosen nation that they will be in their own land and be governed by his son. So it will change and we will be governed by his son. Let's get Deuteronomy 6 and we'll be reading 6, 3 through 5. Deuteronomy 6 and 3. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that you may increase mightily as the Lord of the God, the Lord God of the fathers have promised thee in the land that flows with milk and honey. Six and four, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Six and five, and thou shalt love the Lord thee God with all the heart and with all the soul and with all the might. It's time for us to come back and love our God. It's time for us to come back and love our God. To the descendants of the slave trade, no matter what you think, no matter what you've been taught, the Most High is going to make a new covenant with us who are the children of Israel. We're going to go to Hebrews 8 and we'll be reading um, 7 through 10. Hebrews 8 and 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then shall no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the days when I took them by the hand, to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and regarded them and I regarded them not, said the Lord. You know, he let us go into slavery. He let us lose our, our heritage. He allowed us to lose all understanding. We don't even speak our native tongue. Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their heart. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Yeah. So no matter what, he turned his back on us. He went back and, and, and wanted to see what would come of us. We didn't want to follow him. So. Might as well follow the other nation and see how they mistreated us. So now we're going to be pleased to come back in your arms, Father. The Son of the Most High was only sent for the nation of people that was under the covenant, who are the descendants of the slave trade, known by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the children of Israel. Yes, that's, let's get it. Acts 5, and we're going to be reading 29 through 31. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hung on a tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand, to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Can't make this up. Can't make this up. We are the only ones that can be forgiven for sins because we're the only ones given the laws, statutes, and commandments. Wake up, my people. Wake up, my people. 
to descendants of the slave trade, we are the Israelites. We are still living in a land that our ancestors became slaves. Wow. Deuteronomy 28, a great place to start reading. Shalom to the descendants of the slave trade who are the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Wake up, my people. If you don't know your nationality, you don't know your purpose. If you don't know your purpose, it's impossible to feel the things in life that you are put here to accomplish. Nigger, color, African-American, black. No, we are the Israelites. I'm going to be reading Matthews 26, 7 through 13. Matthews 26, 7 through 13. Matthews 26 and 7. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. Matthew 26 and 8. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? Matthew 26 and 9. For this ornament might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Matthew 26 and 10. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye this woman? For she have wrapped a good work upon me. Matthews 26 and 11. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. Matthews 26 and 12. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Matthew 26 and 13. Very I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done 
be told for a memorial of her. Wake up, my people. Come back to the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To the descendants of the slave trade, we are the Israelites. We are still living in the land that our ancestors became slaves. Wow. Deuteronomy 28, a great place to start reading. With that, we say hallelujah.